Hi, I'm Allie Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company, and today I'm going to show you a design idea and more something to really spark the imagination. I'm going to go over how to seam up peyote stitch, how to do a fast peyote stitch, adding two rows at once, how to embellish adding fringe and sewing between peyote, as well as how to do some pico trims and some tricks with this fringe to create when I'm channeling a coral drop or a coral fringe pendant around this channel coating B. If you do need any of the materials to do this embellished channel, you can go below the video to the date stamp that says when the video was produced and published. Below there, there'll be links to purchase the different products online if you are interested in creating. Again, this video is going to be kind of an eye-opener and ideas video. If you're not sure peyote stitch, you do wanna watch one of the other peyote videos first before going in and kind of learning that quick peyote stitch. You can do this design with any materials, which are great because then you really can look and see what you have on hand create, explore, and make it your own. To get started, we are gonna be using some thread and needle. I'm gonna begin by making the peyote channel, and then we're gonna go over that embellishment of the channel. So go ahead and gather your materials. More is always better than less to have fun and create this coral branch pendant. To begin the cover of the channel, I wanna just start with a strip of peyote. If you need help doing peyote stitch or learning peyote stitch, I've got tons of YouTube videos showing you how to do that stitch. I wanted to start and give you a look and an idea of the design element that we're going for, which is the look, the reason I'm using 11 OC beads rather than Delica's is because I don't want them to sit inside the barrel. I want it to look almost like a popcorn chain sitting along the design. So as I bring my coral beads and add them as the fringe coming out the design, it doesn't look so tight. They're going to be easier to grab onto. And again, I wanted to go with that popcorn look to it. So I did want to just keep going with the 11 OC beads and showing you as we get further along this little section of the peyote stitch in the crystal lab, how that is going to get sewn together and then start the drops off of it and the embellishment on that channel. What you're going to do, be doing is a peyote strip that is 14 beads wide. So 14 beads wide are going to go right along the edge. You're going to be picking up and then adding seven beads at a time as you come through and add in a bead, sew on and attach to those beads that are already there. So you're sitting on and attaching on. I'm using an 11 or a size 10 needle for this portion because I can sew a lot faster with a rigid size 10 than the thin 12. After I go through and close up, this channel cover, I'm going to switch to a size 12 needle. That size 12 needle will allow me to fit through the beads more times and give a more delicate needle that then as I pick up and add the coral and some of the 15 O's, I can do that really easily in the design. So I'm going to go through and keep adding my beads on here seven at a time and creating my peyote strip. If you want to do quick peyote, you can do this, do that for this design. When you do quick peyote, we're going to be adding 14 beads, which is the amount and the length of the row. So it's basically doing two strips or two rows of peyote at once. To do so, I'm going to take my peyote strip here, give a nice tight pull and then kind of let it lay down. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead in and add the 14 beads. So I'll show you this quick peyote and I'm going to do the whole line at once. So I have five. So once I have my 14 beads on, what I'm actually going to do is take my thread and needle through the last bead in the previous row going in the opposite direction, which is going to circle the beads so they're sitting right against the peyote strip. You can see it sits right there, and basically what we're going to be doing is zigzagging through the beads. So I'm not going to go through bead one, I'm going to go through bead two, and then at the same time, I'm going to sew through that next 
to last bead that sits on the peyote row from the row before. You have a nice tight pull and that brings those beads into position. Skip the next bead in that row of 14. So I'm skipping bead number 12 and I'm gonna go through bead 11. As I'm sewing through bead 11 from that row, I'm also gonna go back and sew through the bead that's sticking up from the previous peyote row. Give a little tight yank and I'll get ready to do this again. Again, skip the next bead, go through the ninth bead in row, and go through the next seed bead from the previous row. So this is a way that you can actually go through and do this quicker. It may be quicker for some of you. Traditional peyote may be quicker for others. So that's just based on how quick you are to realize this kind of diagonal method of adding the beads or how quick you are picking up the beads. One thing to be aware of when you are doing this quick peyote that you're adding the two rows at once is sometimes it does have an effect on how the peyote is sitting. So what I like to do is I like to do one row where I do the quick peyote and then another row to get me to the other side starting on the quick peyote. So I do a row with a quick peyote adding 14 on once. Then I'll do one where I do it the traditional method, adding one bead at a time. And then the next row, which will allow me to start at the top rather than the bottom, I'll do another quick row. That way the tension is the same because I'm alternating the sides at which I start that quick peyote adding two rows at once by adding the 14 beads. So I want you to continue basically making this nice peyote strip, adding in your beads, and then we'll get ready to actually seam those two ends together and create the beginning of our channel decoration to create those flowing beads falling off. When you get to the point that you have 18 beads along the top, which is gonna be 36 rows of your peyote stitch, we are going to actually fold those over together and seam them up. You wanna make sure when you are seaming up that the beads are going to line up in that perfect symmetry. So if you're looking at the top row, the top row should have the bead on the leftmost side. The second row down should the bead have the excuse me, should have the bead on the rightmost side, and then vice versa because it's gonna be seamed up like zigzagging, almost a lacing effect. So I'm gonna put it on the actual channel here, and you can see that it's gonna go right on the channel and be kind of completely, completely covering the channel and nice and tight fit. I'm gonna take my thread and needle, going from the side that's the ending side, and go through the last bead on the first row that we added on the first uh, at the beginning side. Just like if you're doing that um, quick peyote, you're then gonna go from the right side to the left side, or in this case here where I'm holding it so you can see, from top to bottom, sewing through and zigzagging through those last beads. Going again from top to bottom. You can see as I pull in then and get those tight, it's creating that nice seamless bond. Going through that, I'm gonna go from top to bottom. If you want to at that same time, sew through the other one on the other side. Just like again, if you're doing that quick two peyote. So I'm gonna keep going through. So you're gonna end up sewing through all 14 beads, seven from one side, seven from the other. You can see I'm not worrying about pulling tight yet. One, because my thread's getting short, but two, because I'll do that at the very end, making sure that's nice and seamless. As I go through now and finish this up, and I'll add a little bit of thread to finish up this nice seamless line, it's not gonna come off the channel. It is on there, and it is sitting almost even when you look down the sides. You can't see the seed beads. They're sitting almost even right along that same channel. So I'm gonna put on my needle. You can even honestly do this most of the time without the needle on. If your thread is getting short, you can usually take it back through that next seed bean pull it out, go through the next seed bean. That's the nice thing with this, with these um, thermally bonded threads that they will allow you to kind of work with them 
a little bit like the needle. If you started with your five feet, you should have extra thread on and continue going down that row. As I get to the end then, all I'm gonna do is literally take the two pieces of thread, the starter thread and the ender thread, and tie them together, making that nice seamless bond. Just to show, I brought the knot in from the outer edge, tied the two threads together, and then I'm gonna take my thread zap or my thread burner and burn those two edges flush. That's gonna get those seed beads kind of tucked in there, and then you're gonna have that seamless ring that you have those nice seed beads on there. I'm not gonna worry about burning that down more, but if you want to, you can burn it down more. I'm gonna be covering it up now with our kind of waterfalling effect of our coral beads. You can use any beads to do this. You're gonna want some 15s on hand and your coral beads. And then I'm actually gonna start with a new piece of thread. So the new piece of thread, if you want to, depending on the actual beads that you're using and the flow that you want, you can switch to 1G thread, which is going to be a little bit thinner than the actual wildfire thread, or you can continue with a new piece of wildfire as you're adding on and gathering your materials. So again, I have my coral and you can drop in whatever you want for this. That's the cool thing. So I'm gonna add in my coral beads, cut those, and we'll start basically a waterfall progression. I'm gonna be looking at it as the number of rows on the outside here. We're gonna be working with about six rows. So we're still gonna have that kind of popcorn effect that we'll be able to see, and we'll see the beads cascading down along six outer rows, which is actually going to be about 12 rows of our peyote that we'll be sewing in and out very liberally and creating just a freeform design. So first things first, we're gonna add a stop bead to our new piece of thread. And that bead's eventually gonna come off the project. I'm just going with one of my 11 OC beads. I usually like to use something that's not in the project, um, but I have these handy. And I just left an inch, that way I can take off that stop bead and sew, um, so that, or not that thread. So I'm gonna start actually somewhere near the middle. I'm not worrying exactly that I'm in the middle. I'm literally just going to sew through, and this is how all seed bead embellishment starts. I'm sewing through that 11 O seed bead. And I'm gonna begin with kind of that center piece. I went through and I removed a lot of my bigger pieces of my coral chips, if you are gonna do the same design that I'm doing. And I'm going in and adding some seed beads. And this is really free form. Picking up some of that coral, another seed bead. I'll go in and add a gold. And I'm gonna pick up one of my drops here. And you can see that's gonna progress and just kind of sit right on the edge there. From there, I'm going to go ahead and add two more gold. I'm sorry, three more gold. Then go back up through the coral, back up through the seed beads, and back through all of the beads that I just added, which is gonna make that fringe. Play around with a thread at the base here just to make sure those seed beads sit in that nice little pico trim design that I wanted to accomplish. There you have your first little fringe piece. So now we're gonna go crazy. When you are going through your peyote stitch, you're going through one bead and coming out, I'm now gonna go through the next bead in that peyote line. Kind of wiggle your needle to come out. And again, I have switched to a size 12 needle for this. As I'm gonna go through, you can see that pulls that fringe in spot in place. And now I'm gonna go in and add another piece of this cascading coral. So I went in and I added an 11. I have four of my 15s. I'm gonna add a coral round, a coral shape, another 11, 15s in silver, another piece of my coral, and let that drop. This piece of coral here, I'll let it hang like that because I want it to hang down a little bit also. So I'll add three more of my 15s and go back up through my 11. So that's the way that you're gonna get it to hang down rather than sit straight, so more like a briolette shape, versus the pico trim, that's a great idea if you want the coral to sit straight. Going up through this then, I'm gonna hold right along the channel, 
give a nice tight pull, you can see how that created that kind of dropping effect. Going in then, coming out that seed bead there along the edge, I'm gonna sew into the next one. And like I said, it's gonna get a little kind of crowded. I'm going to do this for about 12 rows, just going in and creating and pulling at random all of these different progressions of these coral drops. So when I look at it, I'm gonna see a ton of that red coming off the bottom. When you get to the end here, I'm gonna reverse and start going up the next row, adding in and sewing through each of my 11 OC beads on the row above it and adding drops and fringe from there. So I just wanted to show as I'm progressing, so I started basically the middle, I came down the row and I'm coming back through. What's gonna happen as you're sewing down in between each of the rows, it's gonna start to get bunched up, which is exactly the look that we're going for. And I'm sewing through the rows of peyote. So it's almost like those beads, each one, each little fringe is gonna sit between and nestled between beads. And I'm really just picking up at random and I'm not overthinking it, picking up beads, trying to get some of the coral in and the deep colors and that nice summer look and going in. And I am keeping track a tiny bit that the beads that are more towards center, I am gonna keep those strands a little bit longer. But um, other than that, that's pretty much it. Coming off the pieces of coral, I'm just deciding as I add them whether or not I'm having them drop or whether or not I'm creating a little stop bead basically at each end. And I'm sewing back up through the fringe. And as you sew back up through the fringe, just something to kind of keep in mind, is it's nice and easy to sew back through the fringe if you hold the end of the beads and then kind of pull along the last fringe beads. So back through the last couple beads. And then when I come out the last couple beads here, I'm going to take my thread and needle. It's coming out of that bead on that peyote row. I'm going to the next bead on that peyote row. Come out the end here then. And begin picking up at random my next grouping of beads. Starting maybe with a different progression of beads here. A little bit bigger at the top. Smaller beads then. I might add three round beads at a time. Between the strands of inexpensive coral, you really have tons of bead that you can add in. I'll also go through later on and kind of sew some in shorter as well. So I'm gonna go in here. And again, if you want to create a stop on any of these beads, you can just add one bead. Then go skip through that last bead and go back up through the last ones. Super, super simple. Give a nice little tight pull right there at the top, making sure that you don't have a lot of extra thread showing. And then sewing in to the last bead of the row, instead of actually going over to that last bead, which is gonna force me to hit the wall and sew over a little bit more, I'm actually going to progress and then go up to the next row. So I'm just gonna take the thread around the side of that bead Progress up, give a nice tight pull, and now I'm ready to start going back towards center, adding in my next progression, which are always gonna sit in between the last rows. So it makes a nice section for that fringe to hang down. So continue, just keep adding, keep adding, keep adding as we go along. So as I start my next row, and this would be my fifth row here, you can see all of these beads, I'm gonna start almost progressing in kind of a um, shorter version. I have my longer ones to the middle and my shorter ones to the outside, you can kind of see on the back. And you can see the first one that I added in this row was just one single bead with the silver bead working as stopping it. So I'm gonna continue kind of shortening the rows so again they look like they're cascading off the actual front of the channel. So going in here, I'm just adding in my shorter strands that are gonna sit in front of the longer strands going back. If you want to also, depending on the look you want, you can even skip some of the rows if you want it to have a more open look and not quite as full. You can even do if you want just one row. I know that seems crazy because I have so many going, but keep in mind, 
that it is a freeform design and you can make it exactly how you want it. A lot of the times I do videos like this featuring certain products in the store. It's because I want to use them. I want to try them out. I want to see what they start to look like as I go in and actually create with those beads. And I want to give you guys ideas that you then take and make your own. So I'm going to continue on here going in the channel and creating, making little shorter pieces that are gonna sit right on top and add. And you can see as you continue, sometimes it's a little bit hard to get in between those seed bead rows. With that size 12 needle, you can usually just kind of spin it around a little bit that you're gonna start getting that effect. So you can see those shorter beads are gonna sit kind of towards the top and face at the beginning as I go in and kind of make them floating on the actual channel itself. So continue building on your channel and this time working in those shorter strands. As I progress now, having done basically really short fringe, I'm even skipping some rows of the peyote stitch as I create this coral looking um, channel. So as you skip, you may wanna go up on a diagonal from the peyote rows, because my goal is always that I don't see any thread. I don't want any thread showing as I'm working. And I don't want it to look um, very organized. I want it, because I'm using coral, to look very organic. So you can, if you want to, as you progress, kind of come out at different angles, add in a couple of your beads, just with one bead working to look like a grommet holding it there in place, go back through the bead, progress to your next seed bead section, and again wiggle it there so it comes out between the peyote stitch, and as I add those beads in then it's going to give it again more of that kind of organic look that I'm going to keep some of that um, almost popcorn chain look at the top here. And as I add in my pieces of my coral, I'm gonna get a little bit more selective now, kind of taking more of the coral off the strand in order to get the right pieces to fit in here at the top as I add. I'm making sure as I do add it that it looks exactly the way that I want it to. And here's where I'm saying you may not go into the exact same spot of your beads. So you may skip from that row there over to the next row. So here's where you get to have fun. So the original fringe, I went into every single seed bead in every single row. As we go up and progress, remember I said we're going to work with about 12 rows high of the beads. As we progress up those beads and add them in, you may start actually skipping through that peyote to get that look. So I'm going to add in another one of my beads and you can see I'm literally just adding in a bead and then one bead to sit on the top. Sewing back through that one bead and then picking up exactly where I want it to come out, which may not again be exactly where it's originally coming out. As you progress then you can kind of play around with where these beads are sitting and I'm going to continue so that the beads are climbing up on that right hand side. So as I climb up the right hand side, I'm not even going to be adding anything on the left. I'm just adding in my little pieces of my coral that I want to and have those popping up through on an angle through my top. Again, wanting that organic look. If you do want something very structured, you can structure it as well. Coming out the top then, I'm almost to the point where I'm going to be finishing up and sliding it onto my cording. Adding in that bead there. Going back through the bead. And again, sewing it in place exactly where I want it to be. And even bringing those seed beads through on an angle. Positioning that bead right in place there. And continuing up. So I have about three more sews that I'm going to add on and three more beads. And if you put a bead there and you're not crazy about the way that it looks, you can be selective at this point and get a bead that you want and you want the look of and actually use that one. 
Sometimes I'll even, for design sake, just a word of advice, drop it in exactly where I want it to be and then see whether or not that is the look that I'm going for, if that's the place that I want it, or whether or not I want to move it or pick up a different piece of coral. So there I have that in there, coming out the side then. I'm going to pull that in place and get that right at the top. One last bead to sew in. It's going to be a coral bead. I'm going to sew it right along the side, adding no seed beads. And that's just going to float right there. If I want to then organically, I can go in and I can add more coral along the top. That's up to you, but I really do want it to look like the coral is just kind of exploding off that channel and see that popcorn. As I finish now, I'm going to take the thread and needle and I'm going to go back to that starter bead, sewing on a diagonal, tying off the threads. Once you tie off the threads and work them back towards the back of the pendant and burn them off, you'll be finished with your coral branch pendant. You can put it on because it does have a very large opening. You can put it on some bolo cord or a slide. I took some four millimeter or some of my three millimeter coral beads and literally just tied them in a circle to make some slides to go on the side to bring that color up and slide it on the actual bolo cord. But it does make a fun slide that you can add a lot of strands through. You could even string a strand of the coral right through the center or coral chips if you wanted to continue with that bright, bold, red and pink look. But as you finish, you'll have a kind of deeper appreciation for designs that you see, some of the ways of embellishing peyote, and maybe have some new ideas for working with channels and slides such as this. I know there's been a really big push with the carrier beads and doing peyote on the outside, and I think it could be so much more than that through embellishment, through looking at other shapes, and through decorating those as well. Again, if you need any of the materials, you can go below the video to the date stamp that says when the video was produced and there you can get links to order the different materials from us online at potomacbeads.com as well as if you want to you can subscribe to this YouTube channel you'll get regular updates on new products new things that we come out with new design ideas and a way to stay connected with us at the Potomac Bead Company you can always also find us on social social media share with us what you're making we'd love to see it and have fun continuing to create thanks so much for watching and hopefully this gives you tons of ideas for again covering and creating with some of these unique different forms and these unique different peyote stitches that then get embellished.